Okay, so you got your mods installed, you load up your game, and now you're looking at this crazy little screen right here. And you're thinking, okay, did I make a mistake? Is there some kind of problem? Because normally when you see pop-ups, pop-ups are usually bad. Well, no, this is actually exactly what you want. This is just a little warning that's showing you that there are mod scripts that are, have been found in your game. And what I do is I just make sure that, yes, these are the ones that I wanted, and if there's anything missing, then I know that, okay, I must have done something wrong and it didn't make it into the game. But these are all the ones that I put in, and I like that, I'm happy with it, I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Alright, we're going to go ahead and start up a new game, and I think what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and pick, it doesn't matter which town you go into, it's whatever game you want to start. It can be an existing game, it can be a brand new game, and we're just going to start a new one in Sunlit Tides. Go ahead and start it just like normal. When it comes back up, I'm going to show you exactly what we do to get this set up so that you can start playing your game and seeing your town just come to life. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, now you've loaded your game up. It starts to come up with this loading screen. Everything is exactly the same as normal. You won't have any changes to do anything uh, for anything right here. So you just go ahead and let it load up. You can actually go right into Edit Town. You can put down lots, do whatever you want to do, go into Create a Sim, do everything you would normally do. Don't worry about anything. Um, but then when you actually go into the town, that's when we're going to have some changes to make. So instead of creating a sim, we're just going to choose a household. And I'm going to go with the Pleasants right here because, you know, hey, they're right there. And we're going to go ahead and use them. Now, I like to go ahead and put the pause button on as quickly as I can because you know that you know, there's a lot of things that happen, like the Weatherstone, if you have Seasons and Supernatural installed. But you watch. It's going to go ahead and pause us anyway. So go ahead and say yes. You're ready to get started. As soon as it comes in, it's going to zero in on your two uh, your sims here, and it's going to stop you instantly. Okay, and this is what you're going to get. You're going to get a pop-up that tells you that it realizes this is the first time that you've actually had this mod in your game for this town. Right now, it's not doing anything. It's not running the neighborhood. It's still under EA's story progression. But if you want this one to actually take over, click the check mark. If you don't want it to, check over, to take over, just click the X and it won't do anything different. So we're going to go ahead and say, yeah, let's start with the new story progression and have it start. Instantly, it's going to ask you if you can get rid of all the homeless people in the town. It's your judgment call. It's your choice. I usually just say, yeah, go ahead. Um, and then I go ahead and hit the pause button as quickly as I can. That way I can head over there and get to the Weatherstone if I want to. But most, most importantly, I need to make some adjustments before this game gets going. Story progression works quickly. So you need to go ahead and pause it first so you can make the changes and get it set up the way you want. doesn't matter which sim you have activated, but since I've got um, da Daniel over here activated, I'm going to just go ahead and click on him. And I get the NRAS menu right here, which is just an option I can use. Go ahead and you'll see that you've got three. It doesn't have all the um, mods that we put in. It has these three right here. I never mess with Overwatch. It's doing its job. It does what it needs to do, so I just leave it alone. We're going to look at story progression first because that's where I make the most changes. I go ahead and click on story progression, and I just want to go into general options. In my town, um, the first thing I want to do is go down to options and romance. I do not like hyphenated names. So when Sims get married in the town, uh, the way this is defaulted, they'll take a hyphenated name, they'll take the wife's name and the husband's name and blend them together. I would rather them take the traditional husband's name. So I click on that one, which is marriage name, tell it that I want the husband's name to be the default. And for same-sex couples, of course, I just want them to do a coin flip. It's always a surprise. And that takes care of, don't you won't have all these crazy hyphenated names throughout the town. You can also go down here for stories. And right now, you're going to actually be following every story of every sim in your town. And you're going to get a whole bunch of little pop-ups up here that might drive you crazy. Uh, if you're like me and you want to see everything and you want to get to know all the sims in the town, leave it on, read it, and you can disregard what you want to. But if you really would just like to focus on only the people related to you, you can go ahead and just click blood, put the uh, check mark on, and now you'll notice down here under stories, you're only following your blood relatives. If you want to click it again, and let's say you want to also follow your friends as well, click on friends. Now you've got a custom story format you click on story one more time you can open it back up and you can see that you're actually now following two and you can click on a whole bunch of other ones if you've got some people that you've moved into the household that are not related by blood but they're here in your house you can just follow only your residents and that way it's not just going to be the blood it'll be everybody that's in your household I'm going to leave it on the default of all because it really doesn't matter to me at this point because we're not going to actually play the game but that just shows you a couple of things that you would need to do now 
Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and click out of it, but I'm going to go back into it one more time, clicking on him to NRAS, go back to Story Progression and General Options. There's another thing that's going to happen, and that's people moving into your town. So go into Options and Lots, and you're going to go ahead and you're going to look for something that says Options, Immigration, and Emigration. Click on it, and you're going to get a chance to actually figure out if you want them to move into your house or move into your town quickly or not. Uh, if you want to actually force it to move, do it a little bit quicker than the normal progression would, do your immigration gauge. Just put a value, anything over zero will actually work. And it will actually say once you hit that pressure, somebody's going to move into the town if there's an available house. So now I've got a new menu that pops up where I have some choices to make. For immigrants, I do not want hyphenated names. So I'm going to go to immigrant name, do the same thing, and I'm going to pick whichever one that I want. And I'm just going to say take the father's name. You could have done a coin flip. It really didn't matter. But you can do that right there. And then there's one other option that you might want. If you want your families to move into your town quickly, you can go ahead and choose rapid immigration. Right now, there is a default of zero. It means nobody's moving into your town right now. Um, it's not really going to have anybody rapidly move in. But if you want like two families to move in per night, or you know, if there's houses available for them, then they can afford it. Put the number two. Once you do that, it's going to tell you how many will go during that cycle. So that actually gets you set up to where your town will fill up quickly. All right. Now, that brings me to another point, but I need to actually do something else with, with Daniel in just a minute. Let's say when you go up here into map view, you know you don't want to stay in this house for very long. You know that you've played this game before, and you have a favorite house somewhere over here, and I'm looking for one. And what I'm going to just go into edit town just so we can find a house that is actually vacant. Because I don't remember them all offhand. I just know that there's houses that I like in different towns. So look for a house that maybe you might think eventually I want. This one up here seems pretty nice, the beach house. Let's return to the game. And yeah, we're just going to continue. What I want to do is you need to do this in live mode. So go back in, go up into the town. Let's go find that house that you want. We're still paused, so we're not actually losing any time or anything. And then just go into the house. It doesn't matter where you're at. Click on this house, and you're going to get the NRAS menu again. And here you're going to get Master Controller. Um, let's see. Nope, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You wanted Story Progression. Go to Story Progression, and it's going to give you lot options. Okay, now you want this house, and you don't want anybody else stealing this from you. So if you go ahead right now, it's, it's saying, yes, this house is allowed for progression. But if you go ahead and say, allow a lot for progression and turn it false, nobody's ever going to move into this house. This one will be empty, and you can have it once your Sims make enough money and you can move into it. So that's just one way that you can do it. But if you don't really care and you're like, you know, if somebody else wants it, let them have it. I can always evict. Just go ahead and do that. Okay, so that's it. You can also tell how many people can be the max living in that house. If you really want to have that much control, you can do it. But that's just another way that you can control your town. All right, let's go back to Daniel real quick. So there's one other thing I want to show you before we go into just yet another one. All right, the master controller gives you a lot of flexibility with your sims. So when I click on master controller, you can play around and look at all of these different um, activities you can do with them. Intermediate to me is one of the most fun ones that you can do. Um, as you know, sometimes you put the Sims into the game and they're like four, five, six days old already. And I'm thinking, but wait a minute, I don't have much time with them. I want the full amount of time. Go in and just change their age. If he's starting right now at this game, he's at uh, his third day of life or third day of young adulthood, I can bop him, uh, bop him right back down over to zero and he can have his full young adult life stage. Or if I've been playing the game and it crashed and I need to come back and fix him, I can actually age him up to whatever I need to. Which also means if I really want his skills to be changed, I can come over here and I believe it's under advanced if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, skill level. I can come over here and say, you know what, I had to stop the game, I had to end it, but I really, he was actually at a level 10 of athletics. You can go ahead, click on athletics, tell it exactly what level he should be at, now he is at a level 10 athletic right there. And you'll notice you've got a whole bunch of little pop-ups right here. And I'm going to go ahead and show you. These are all the different things. He's leveled up to level 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So there you go. And you can do that for every skill, including the hidden skills. 
Master Controller is your friend. It will help you if you have a crash and you need to restart your game. So definitely something to think about. Um, there's so many different options that you can use with that. There's different ones under all of them. Um, advanced, I can't remember. No, it's not advanced. You can actually kill them if you want. But I don't want to do that. I'm not that mean. But if you go back over to in Intermediate, if you do not want him to be a celebrity and you forgot to turn celebrities off, you can change this and you can change the celebrity level, take him from a whatever star he is down to, back to down to zero. Or if you don't want to go through the whole process of becoming a celebrity, you just want to start off as one, here you go. So as you can see, there's so much flexibility and control that you have over this entire game and it's all because of these mods. You can change just about everything in here. You can give them an instant baby if you forgot to give them one. There's just a lot of different things you can do. You can go ahead and set his career. You can set his career level, whatever you need to do. All right, so one more thing. Uh, if you go into the town, right now there is, and I have I have the hardest time remembering where everything is in this town because I, don't pl I haven't played it in a while. I played it in my World Adventures LP, but not in this one. All right, that's the school. I'm looking for City Hall, and I believe City Hall's back over here, if I'm not mistaken. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. All right, so go to City Hall, and if you click on City Hall, and then you get the NRAS menu, you're going to see you've got a few more. Okay, you've got Register, and Register is actually going to give you the option of turning off different things. You can control the different types of animals, how many spawn. You can control whether you get tourists or not. You can do all different kinds of things that... that will help you decide if you really want those paparazzi messing around with you you can turn them off so this is something that I love but here's another one you can go over here to traveler and traveler is the one that allows you to go from this country this neighborhood to any other installed city or neighborhood that you've got and you can decide what you want for it to do you can decide how much the cost is you can decide um, if you can have any restrictions which means right now I don't have any restrictions. I can take anybody I want to take, no matter what age. I don't. I think, I think they can even be pregnant. I don't remember for sure. But this is where you can do that. Now you're going to notice right here. Let's go back over to Daniel. If we wanted to travel, and this would be if you're playing a World Adventures game, you've just started this game. When you open up your phone, normally you get the option to travel. Well, we don't have that option, do we? Well, what you'll need to do is first, you'll need to save the game and then you're going to get that option. So you have to save your game one time before Traveler will actually open up. So hold on just a moment, I'll be right back. Okay, I just saved the game, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let Daniel try to travel this time, and as you see, travel did come up as an option. So let's take him off pause, and let's go ahead and see what we can do. And he's going to go ahead and he's going to get some new options that you're not used to. All right. We have the same traditional options of China, we have Egypt, and we have France, and they still have the same restrictions on your visa. So you are restricted, of course, until you get your visa level up to the high enough level. But right over here, you can actually start rolling through, and you can see that we could go over to Appaloosa Plains, or Barnacle Bay, or Bridgeport, or any of these other neighborhoods that I have installed. It does not have to be just the EA towns, it can be any custom neighborhood that you have installed in the game as well. So if I want to take him over to uh, Starlight Shores, he can do that and there are no restrictions on travel time you can actually go all the way up to 12 days but of course you're going to be paying based on however many days you're going so you just decide and of course how many people are going so at this point you are actually you have an entire maximum level of uh, three in these neighborhoods now if you um, again if you were trying to go back over to China Egypt or France and you choose those it's automatically going to knock you down. You have to go through the adventures. There is a mod that will take care of it from NRAS called uh, Debug Enabler, but I kind of like the challenge of actually having to go through and, um, and do this. So anyway, that's just showing you that Traveler is easy to do. Just make sure you save your game, otherwise you will not get that option and you won't be able to do anything. Okay, now there's one other thing that I would like to show you, and to do that, I'm going to actually have him travel for just a moment. So I'll be back. We're going to actually take him out. I should have done it while I had the travel menu open, but I wasn't thinking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have him travel over, and we're going to go to China real quickly. And this is just a reason. I just want to show you this real quick. So let him get started. When I come back, we're going to be in China, and I'm going to show you something that you need to do. So I'll be back in just a second. Okay, now before we go, I believe in the Traveler mod, it's going to automatically save your game before you actually leave. So I've 
I forgot that. So every time you do, it's going to ask you to save. And of course, he's got to drive all the way to the outskirts of town, which means I should have waited until he got there. But I thought he would go a little quicker since we are pretty much on the edge of town. Come on, Daniel. All right, so it's going to ask you to save the game. Save it. Just keep the same name unless you want to change it. And it says, yeah, it's already there. You can change that when you click on City Hall and you can tell it not to ask you to save every time. But I think it's a good idea to do this in case you have a mistake and you lose him. You have the saved copy. You just close out of the game. You'll be, go right back to where you were uh, in sunlight, Sunlit Tides. Be back in just a second once we hit China. Okay, now we're here in China. It automatically popped us in over here, but in just a second, you're going to probably get the flyby menu, I believe. I'm not sure. Maybe it won't. Sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't. But anyway, here we are. We're in China. Now, don't be surprised if you're using the Traveler mod if you arrive in China and it's pouring down rain because the... Um, I think it's going to take us out. Yeah, okay, so it takes a minute and it has to realize that, oh, wait, it didn't show you the video. So don't worry, you'll see this, it'll happen. I think it happens in every town, it just has to figure out what it's doing. But don't be surprised if you see weather effects because the Traveler mod will give you weather in all of these different travel destinations, including China, France, and Egypt, which I think is pretty cool. It's something that's a little different, something you don't get in the traditional game. All right, now, you're going to get the same story progression mod, you get the same options. If you want story progression to take care of this town and have all the people get married and have babies and do all these things, do just like we did before. But if you don't really want that and you just want to go over here for the adventures, just click X and that's you're back to normal. This is just the regular story uh, progression from EA. And I'm going to go ahead and let him check for an adventure and you know we're going to get the very first one. What I'm going to do is get him over to that first tomb and then I'll be back in just a second to show you what we needed to actually do and what we need to change. So I'll be back in just one moment. When we're back, we will be in that... Um... Oh, that's not the one I wanted. I'm sorry, we'll be back in that tomb. So give me just a second. I'll be there and I'll be there to show you in just a moment. Okay, here we are. We're in our very first tomb. And Daniel, don't go anywhere. Anyway, I wanted to show you one thing that you know if you played World Adventures. You're supposed to run your cursor, your mouse, along the wall. And you're waiting for it to change. But if you'll notice, mine is constant with this little asterisk on it. And that's just giving you the NRAS menu option. It, to get rid of that so you can play World Adventures, click on your sim. Go into NRAS, go into Story Progression, General Options, and you want to go into Options, Lots. When you're there, look at Show Menu Interactions. You want to click on it, make sure it's false, click the arrow, and now you're back to normal, and it's only going to actually change when you have an interaction that you can do. If you don't do that, it makes World Adventures almost impossible to play. So that's the only thing I would tell you. You really have to make sure you do. Otherwise, you're going to have some major issues with it. But guys, that's basically it. And that is story progression in a nutshell. When he's ready to go back home, you do the same thing. You just pick up the phone and you go home. But that's really all that I do for my games. Um, it's pretty simple. I love what story progression do, will do for your game. I love what the actual um, master controller will allow you to do. So if you like using them, if you want to use them, hopefully you'll see that this has made some sense to you. And please, if there's been anything that I can make a little bit clearer, let me know. But I tried to make sure that I show you the basic things that I use. And then the rest of it, you just kind of have to play around with it and kind of get comfortable with the mod itself. So leave in the comments anything that you need more clarification on. I'll try my best to help you. I'm not the expert, but I can, I can do this well enough to actually play the game. So hopefully it's helped you guys and you've enjoyed watching these videos. And um, I don't know. Let me know how I did. I hope I helped you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and look for me in the next LP, which I'm actually getting ready to sit down and record. So I will see you guys in the next one.